As the sun started to go down, we began to pack our stuff. We had spent the day at a secret cliff diving spot, known only to us and a few locals. The cold water and the thrill from the dives had left us excited but worn out. A park officer, noticing our group, told us about a faster way back to the car park. It was a route we hadn't used before, but we thought it would be fun. Hoping to get back quicker, we started on the new path. The path was tougher than we thought. There were rocks sticking out everywhere, and the thick plants made it hard to see far. We were lost, but we didn't know it until we had been walking for about an hour and a half. The path suddenly stopped in a clearing, with plants all around us. That's when we saw it a bear. It was the first time I had seen one so close, its size and strength clear in every move it made. My heart was beating fast, and I could hear my blood rushing. The thought of running was scary, but the idea of someone getting caught was even scarier. We slowly moved back, always watching the bear. It looked at us, seeming interested but not dangerous. We decided to risk it and walked down the mountain instead of trying to go around it. The way down was steep and risky, but we made it without any problems. When we got to the bottom of the mountain, we looked back to see the bear going back into the woods. We were safe, but the experience had scared us. The experience wasn't creepy, but it was definitely a reality check. Nature is beautiful, but it can also be unpredictable and dangerous. We learned to respect it more that day, and to always stick to the paths we knew. It was a lesson we wouldn't forget any time soon. And as for the bear, it reminded us of the wild, untamed beauty of nature that was just outside our city lives. It was a day of adventure, a day of fear, and in the end, a day of respect for the power of nature. It was our first day camping in Yellowstone. We were a group of friends, some of us had never been camping before. The park rangers had told us to be careful because there were bears around. When it got dark, all we could hear was our campfire and an owl in the distance. Suddenly, one of my friends heard a strange noise. He thought it was a bear. He grabbed his flashlight and convinced the others to go with him to check it out. They put on their shoes and went into the dark. I watched their flashlights move away from our campsite. After a while, they came back looking let down. The bear, they heard was just an old man snoring in his tent not too far from us. We all laughed about it and spent the rest of the night telling stories and eating marshmallows. The bear scare became a funny memory from our first night in Yellowstone. When our trip was over, we left Yellowstone with more than just memories. The bear scare, even though it was a false alarm, reminded us of the beauty of Yellowstone and the excitement of camping. It was a trip we would always remember. The first night of our trip was really spooky. I was in a tent with two other guys, and we had gone to bed for the night. The woods were silent, and the only noise was the leaves rustling outside every now and then. A couple of hours into the night, I woke up to a loud, and oh, from the guy next to me. I looked at him, and he was still asleep. His face was twisted, and he mumbled, Shut up, Dad. His words broke the silence of the night, and soon, everyone in the nearby tents started laughing. The laughter woke him up, and he looked around, puzzled. I had never heard someone talk in their sleep before, and it was pretty scary. That night, I found out something new about my friend, who was usually the fun guy in our backpacking group. He talked in his sleep, and it seemed like he had some problems with his dad. We decided not to talk about it for the rest of the trip, out of respect for him. The night wasn't over yet. For the next half an hour, everyone was awake, chatting with each other from inside our tents and sleeping bags. My friend, maybe trying to take the focus off himself, started saying that I was spooning him. The more I denied it, the more he accused me. As the night went on, the accusations became a joke. The woods didn't seem so scary as we laughed and joked around. As the night got later, the laughter quieted down, and one by one, everyone fell back asleep. Lying there, listening to the sounds of the woods, I realized that the scariest things are often not the unknown things hiding in the dark, 
but the secrets and fears that we carry inside us. That night, under the stars, I learned more about my friend and myself than I had in all the days leading up to the trip. The trip went on, and we had lots more fun, but that first night stuck in my memory. It was a reminder that no matter how far we travel, we can never really run away from ourselves. The real adventure is not just about seeing new places, but also about facing and understanding our own fears and worries. And that's what makes every trip really special. The sun went down and our campfire was burning bright. I was there with my mom, her boyfriend, his son, and a few of his son's buddies. The air smelled like marshmallows roasting and you could hear everyone laughing. The grown-ups were telling stories, while the kids were all huddled up, their faces lit up by the fire. As it got darker, the stories started to get scarier. Her boyfriend, who was really good at telling stories, started talking about weird creatures and spooky stuff that happens in the woods. The kids were listening, their eyes big and focused, forgetting about their marshmallows. All of a sudden, we heard a noise in the forest. It was getting louder and closer. It sounded like something big was running towards our camp. Everyone stopped laughing right away, and it got really quiet. The only sound was the fire crackling. We all got scared. The kids were holding onto each other, their eyes wide with fear. My mom held my hand tightly. Her boyfriend stood up, holding a flashlight, looking into the dark. The noise got louder, and then, out of nowhere, a deer came out of the forest. Its eyes were big and scared. It stopped for a second, looked at us, and then ran off, disappearing into the dark. We all felt relieved. We started laughing again, a bit shaky at first, but then more relaxed. The scary feeling was gone, replaced by a feeling of peace. The story started again, this time not as scary, and the sound of laughter filled the air again. Later that night, as I was lying in my tent, listening to the quiet sounds of the forest, I felt calm. The scary moment had brought us closer together, reminding us of how beautiful and unexpected nature can be. I would always remember that night, the fear, the relief, the laughter, and the feeling of togetherness. It was a reminder that even when you're scared, there's always room for laughter and love. That's what makes life beautiful, right? I've always been a big fan of being outside, and camping was my way of really feeling close to nature. Living in Nebraska, I was lucky to have some of the best camping spots in the US. One of my top picks was the Double Nickel Campground, just off the main highway. The campground was huge, covering a lot of ground. It was a really nice place, with tall, green trees giving lots of shade during the day and the sound of crickets at night. The site had a mini golf course, a pool, and even a pinball machine for those who wanted some fun. One summer, I decided to go camping by myself at Double Nickel. I got there in the afternoon, the sun making long shadows as it started to set. I put up my tent, made a simple dinner over the fire, and when it got dark, I decided to go for a walk. The moon was full, lighting up the campground. The air was cool, and the only noise was the sound of leaves crunching under my feet. All of a sudden, I heard a noise in the bushes nearby. I stopped, my heart beating fast. I listened hard, trying to figure out what the noise was. It was a low growl, not like any animal I'd heard before. I slowly moved back, my eyes fixed on the bushes. Then, out of nowhere, a big, dark shape came out. It was a bear, its eyes shining in the moonlight. I stood still, remembering what I'd read about what to do if you see a bear. I spoke in a low voice, trying to make myself look bigger by lifting my arms. The bear sniffed the air, then to my relief, turned and walked away into the dark. I let out a breath I didn't know I'd been holding. I quickly went back to my tent, my heart still beating fast. That night, I stayed awake, listening to the sounds of the night. Seeing the bear was scary, but it also reminded me of how beautiful and powerful nature is. When the sun came up, I packed up my stuff, thinking about what had happened the night before. As I drove away from Double Nickel Campground, I looked back at the big site, 
feeling a mix of respect and wonder. It was a trip I would always remember, a strong reminder of the thin line between fear and respect when faced with the wild. I've always enjoyed camping. My trip to Taklanica River Campground in Denali National Park, Alaska, was something special. The campground is at mile 29 on the Denali Park Road. It's the second biggest in Denali, with 53 spots for RVs and tents. It's surrounded by the huge Alaskan wilderness, which is amazing to see. The day I got there, the sun was out, making long shadows over the thick forest. The air was fresh and clean, smelling like pine trees and wet dirt. I put up my tent in a small open area. The ground was hard and cold. The campground was big, going as far as I could see, with the big Taklanica River nearby. When night came, it got colder. I got into my sleeping bag. The quiet of the Alaskan wilderness was all around me. Suddenly, I heard a noise outside my tent. My heart was beating fast as I slowly opened the tent to look out into the dark. A big grizzly bear was going through my food. I held my breath, watching as the bear sniffed around. Its big body made a scary shadow in the moonlight. I knew I had to scare it away, but how? I remembered reading about making loud noises to scare off bears. I got brave, picked up a metal pot and spoon that were close by, and started banging them together. The bear looked up, surprised by the noise. For a moment, it looked right at me, its eyes shining in the moonlight. Then, as fast as it had shown up, it turned and walked off into the forest. I felt relieved as I watched the bear go into the dark. I stayed awake the rest of the night, still feeling excited. When the first light of morning came through the trees, I packed up my stuff and left the campground. That camping trip showed me the real power and beauty of nature. It taught me to respect the wilderness and the animals that live there. It was scary, but also made me feel humble. I left to Klanica River Campground with a new love for the wild and I'll always remember that night. The day had been filled with laughter and adventure. My husband, our two kids, and I had decided to go camping. The sun was setting, casting long shadows over our secluded campsite. We were sitting at the picnic table, engrossed in a game of cards, the only sound being the rustle of leaves and the occasional hoot of an owl. As the night grew darker, beetles of all different types began to fall from the trees. They buzzed around us, their tiny bodies hitting the table, the lantern, and even us. At first, it was just a minor annoyance, but then they started to get bigger and more bizarre looking. Their hard shells glistened under the lantern light, and their antennas twitched in the cool night air. My daughters, usually so brave, began to freak out. The beetles were everywhere, crawling up the table flying into their hair. Their faces were pale, and I could see the tears welling up in their eyes. So, we decided to retreat to the safety of our tent. As I stepped into the tent, I felt a strange sensation on my back. I turned around to see my daughter's faces go from scared to downright terrified. They screamed that there was a beetle on my back. I wasn't scared, but I asked them to brush it off. They wouldn't come near me, when my husband entered the tent, I asked him to get it off. But instead of helping, he let out a scream and backed away. That's when I knew something was wrong. Something huge and freaky was crawling on me. In a panic, I ripped off my sweatshirt and threw it outside the tent. The rest of the night was spent in silence. My husband and I didn't exchange a word. The kids were quiet too, their eyes wide and alert. We could still hear the beetles outside their bodies hitting the tent fabric. It was a long, sleepless night. As dawn broke, we packed up our things and left. The beetles had disappeared, leaving behind only the memory of a night filled with fear. The camping trip had taken a terrifying turn, but it also taught us a valuable lesson. Nature is unpredictable, and sometimes, the smallest creatures can cause the biggest scares. And so, we returned home, a little shaken but safe. The memory of that night still sends shivers down my spine, but it has also brought us closer as a family. We faced our fears together, and in the end, 
we came out stronger. Despite the scare, we look forward to our next camping trip, ready to face whatever nature throws at us. After all, these are the adventures that make life interesting. After finishing high school, my friends and I decided to walk 50 miles of the Appalachian Trail. We planned to do 12 miles each day for four days. It was a hard trip, but we were excited about the adventure. The first three days were tough but fun. We walked all day, looking at the beautiful views and enjoying the quiet of nature. However, the last day was a different story. I woke up when the sun rose with the worst stomach pain of my life. I had to run to the bushes several times, feeling like I was losing my insides. Despite this, we managed to walk the last 12 miles before lunchtime, thanks to my urgent need to stay close to a toilet. During our trip, three of us found deer ticks on our bodies. We thought our fourth friend was lucky for not finding any. But as it turned out, he wasn't so lucky after all. A few weeks after our trip, he started feeling sick. He had a fever, headache, and was tired. He went to the doctor and was told he had Lyme disease. It turned out that he had a deer tick too, but he just hadn't found it. Despite the challenges, our hiking trip was an experience we'll never forget. It taught us about the beauty and dangers of nature. And even though our friend got sick, he got better after treatment and is now more careful when hiking. This adventure was a reminder that nature is unpredictable and can be tough at times. But with the right precautions and respect for animals, we can enjoy its beauty without harm. It was a trip we'll always remember, not just for the scary moments, but for the lessons we learned and the friendships we strengthened. It was a hot summer day when I started my hike in the Great Dividing Range in Australia. It was really hot, but the place was so beautiful that I didn't mind the heat. The range was big and full of rough mountains and green valleys. I didn't bring much with me, just a sleeping bag and a tent cover. I planned to sleep outside under the stars. The first few nights were amazing. The sky was full of stars and it was very quiet, except for some animals making noises at night. But one night, I set up my camp near a tree that was full of caterpillars. They were small, fuzzy, and hairy. They didn't bother me during the day. But at night, they kept crawling on my face. I couldn't sleep well that night. I kept waking up because the caterpillars were tickling my face. Every time I felt one, I would wake up and take it off my face. But another one would crawl on me right after. I was glad when the morning came. Even though it was uncomfortable, I thought it was a weird and interesting experience. It reminded me that nature can be unpredictable and sometimes you have to deal with small problems when you're out in the wild. When the sun came up, I packed my sleeping bag and brushed off the last caterpillars. I looked at the tree one last time. It was full of caterpillars in the morning light. It was a strange sight, but also kind of cool. Feeling excited, I continued my hike, ready for whatever else the great dividing range had for me. The night with the caterpillars was not comfortable, but it was a unique experience that made my trip more interesting. It reminded me that even when things are tough, there's always a good story to tell. It was my first night at Sleeping Giant in Canada. I was all by myself, camping near the forest. My tent was set up on a small hill, with a view of a rocky beach. The sounds of the forest were new and loud, making me feel a bit nervous. I couldn't sleep. The noises of the forest seemed to fill the quiet night. Every little sound, every bird call, made me think of a bad guy hiding in the shadows, instead of just normal animals. I tried to calm myself down, reminding myself that I was in the middle of nature, and these sounds were just a part of it. Just as I was starting to relax, I heard something that made my heart beat fast. Loud footsteps. Twigs breaking. It sounded like something big was moving around outside my tent. I was sure I was about to be in big trouble, all alone in the Canadian woods. Suddenly, there was a loud noise and the sound of rocks falling right outside my tent. 
I gathered all my bravery, turned on my flashlight and slowly opened the tent door to see what was happening. In the light of my flashlight I saw a big, clumsy elk that had just slipped down the hill onto the beach in front of me. I breathed a sigh of relief. It was just a harmless animal, probably more scared of me than I was of it. The rest of the night passed without any more scares, but the excitement from the encounter kept me awake until morning. The next few days were calm. I spent my time checking out the trails and enjoying the beauty of the park. The encounter with the elk had added some excitement to my trip, reminding me of how unpredictable nature can be. When it was time to leave, I looked back at the spot where the elk had slipped. The memory made me smile. It had been a scary, but exciting experience. It was a trip that I would remember for a long time, a real adventure in the wild. And even though I was scared at first, I knew I would come back for more. It was my first time camping in Yosemite National Park. The park was really pretty during the day, but when night came, I started to feel scared. I had heard about the black bears in the park. People said they were mostly harmless, but the idea of meeting one was still scary. When I got into my tent for the night, the sounds of the forest were both relaxing and spooky. The leaves moving, the far-off sound of an owl, and the wind every now and then were the only sounds. I fell asleep not thinking about bears. Suddenly, I woke up. It was 3 a.m. The forest was full of sounds that weren't there before. Grunting sounds, branches breaking, trees moving. My heart was beating fast as I lay there, in my thin tent, the only thing between me and the outside. I could hear the grunting getting closer. The breaking of branches was louder, more often. I held my breath, hoping whatever it was would go away. But it didn't. The sounds got louder, closer. I could hear the heavy breathing of a big animal just outside my tent. I remembered what people had told me. If you meet a bear, make yourself look bigger, make noise, don't run. But in that moment, I forgot all that. I was too scared to move. Then, just as quickly as it had started, the noise stopped. The grunting, the breaking, the heavy breathing all gone. I lay there, holding my breath, waiting for the sounds to start again. But they didn't. The forest was quiet again. When the first light of morning came through my tent, I finally let myself breathe. I opened the tent and stepped out, half expecting to see a bear. But there was nothing. No bear, no broken branches. No signs of a visitor in the night. The fear from the night before was replaced with a feeling of relief and wonder. I had made it through a night in the wild, faced my fear, and was okay. As I packed up my stuff, I felt a new respect for the wild and its animals. That night in Yosemite was a strong reminder of how small we are compared to nature. It was a humbling experience, one that I will always remember. And while I was scared, I also realized that fear is a normal reaction to the unknown. It's what keeps us aware, what keeps us alive. And for that I am thankful. We set up our camp in Yellowstone. It was my friend's first time there, and they were a bit scared because of the bear warnings. The big trees and the wide open nature were new to them, and they were really excited. When it got dark, we could hear all kinds of sounds leaves moving, an owl far away, and the quiet that you only get in a forest. We sat close to the campfire, and the shadows made us imagine all sorts of things. Suddenly, one of my friends heard a noise that sounded like a bear. He got everyone else to listen to, and we all got a bit scared. He couldn't wait to find out what it was, so he put on his shoes, took a flashlight, and went to check it out. We all followed him trying to be as quiet as possible. We followed the sound, shining our flashlights into the dark. The noise got louder, and we thought we were about to meet a bear. But what we found was not a bear. It was an old man, sleeping in his tent not too far from ours, and snoring loudly. We realized what had happened and started laughing at how scared we had been. We went back to our camp, feeling relieved and finding the whole thing pretty funny. We sat around the fire again and the story of our bear hunt became something we all remembered. When the fire went out and we went to sleep, I felt really happy. 
That night had been an adventure, a story to tell, and a memory to keep. And as I fell asleep to the sounds of the real nature around me, I knew we would never forget this night. The first night of our trip was really creepy. I was in a tent with two other guys, right in the middle of the forest. The air was cool, and the only sound was the leaves rustling. A few hours into the night, I woke up to a loud, and oh, it was so sudden and loud that it broke the silence of the night. I looked over and saw my tent mate, still asleep, looking troubled. Shut up, Dad, he yelled again, his voice echoing around the quiet forest. The tents nearby started stirring, and soon, everyone was laughing. It was strange and a bit scary, hearing someone talk in their sleep like that. That night, I learned something new about my friend. The fun, party guy had a hidden side, maybe some issues with his dad. We didn't talk about it again, out of respect for him. The night wasn't over yet. With everyone now awake and the silence replaced by soft chatting, my friend, maybe to take the attention off him said I was spooning him. The more I denied it, the more he kept saying it, making it a funny situation. As the night went on, the laughter quieted down, replaced by the peaceful sounds of the forest. The stars were bright above, casting long shadows that moved around our campsite. The event, though it was a bit scary at first, ended up bringing us closer as a group. We learned to respect each other's space, and the rest of the trip went without a hitch. In the end, the first night of our trip wasn't just another camping night. It was a night of learning new things, of shared laughter, and of building stronger friendships. It was a night that taught us respect and understanding, and it was a night that we would remember for the rest of our lives. The forest, in its own special way, had brought us closer together. And as the sun rose on a new day, we packed up our tents, ready to face whatever adventures were waiting for us, stronger as a group and with more experience. It was just after sunset, and our campfire was popping and hissing, throwing weird shadows all around us. I was there with my mom, her boyfriend, his kid, and a few of his friends. The smell of marshmallows roasting on the fire filled the air, and everyone was laughing and having a good time. Her boyfriend started telling the kids some adventure stories. They were supposed to be scary, but they were more funny than anything else, with silly monsters and brave kids. The kids were listening, their eyes wide and a little scared, but mostly excited. All of a sudden, we heard a noise in the forest. It was getting louder and closer, like something was running towards us. Everyone stopped laughing right away, and it got really quiet. The only sounds were the fire and the scary noise that was getting closer and closer. The kids moved closer together, looking scared in the light from the fire. My mom held my hand tighter looking out into the dark forest. Her boyfriend stood up and turned on a flashlight, shining it into the darkness. The noise got louder, and then all at once, a deer jumped out of the bushes. It stopped for a second, its eyes shining in the light from the fire, and then it ran off back into the forest. We all breathed a sigh of relief. The scary feeling went away, and we all felt closer because of what had happened. We laughed about it later, remembering how scared we had been. The rest of the night was peaceful. We roasted more marshmallows, told more stories, and when it was time for bed, we went to sleep in our tents, with the sounds of the forest around us. In the end, it was just a deer, not something scary. But that night, under the stars and surrounded by the big, dark forest, it felt like more than that. It was a reminder of the things we don't know, of the excitement that comes with a little bit of fear and of the stories we would remember long after the fire had gone out. I always liked camping, and my favorite place was the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska. It was a big place with lots of room for tents and RVs. It was right next to the highway, so it was easy to get to. It had fun stuff like mini golf and pools, but the best part was the beautiful nature around it. One summer, I decided to go camping there by myself. The first day was normal I set up my tent, looked around, 
and enjoyed the peace and quiet. But when night came, things started to feel weird. Instead of the normal sounds of nature, everything was really quiet. I could hear leaves moving and an owl hooting far away. Then, I heard a strange sound, like something heavy being pulled on the ground. I tried to tell myself it was just a deer or some other animal, but the sound was too regular, too steady. I decided to check it out. I took my flashlight and followed the sound. It led me to a part of the campground I had never been to before. There, I found a big, old tree with deep marks on its bark. The ground around it was messed up, like something had been pulled across it. My heart was beating fast as I shined my flashlight around. That's when I saw it a big, dark shape moving between the trees. It was too big to be a deer, and it moved in a way that made me feel really scared. I ran back to my tent, my mind full of fear. I stayed awake all night, listening to every sound, every leaf moving. But the strange sounds had stopped, and the dark shape didn't come back. When morning came, I packed up my stuff and left the campground. I was still scared, but I also remembered that night. I realized that even in places you know well, there can still be surprises. Even though I was scared, I went back to the double nickel campground the next year. I love being outside too much to stay away. But I never went out alone at night again. And every time I saw that old tree, I remembered the dark shape and the sound of something being pulled. That experience taught me to respect nature and the things we don't know about it. It made my camping trips more exciting and gave me a story to tell around the campfire. But most of all, it reminded me that even when you're scared, the beauty of nature is worth it. It was early in the night, and everything was quiet. The only noise was the sound of leaves crunching under my feet as I walked into the dark woods. I was camping with my buddies, and it was my first time trying shrooms. Everything around me looked colorful and weird, and the trees seemed to move with my heartbeat. I was the unlucky one who had to find our way through the dark to meet another friend who was coming to join us. The forest was like a maze, and every tree looked the same. I could hear everything clearly, like the sound of an owl in the distance, the noise of small animals in the bushes, and the wind blowing through the trees. I felt like I was walking for hours, my heart beating fast. The path was twisty and dangerous, and I tripped a few times. The darkness felt heavy, and the shadows looked like they were moving out of the corner of my eye. I was alone, lost in a forest that felt strange and scary. Finally, after what felt like forever, I saw a small light far away. I felt better when I saw it was our friend's flashlight. She was waiting at the edge of the woods, her face a source of comfort in the dark. I don't know how I got out of those woods, but I was glad she knew the way back to the campsite. The walk back is a blur. I followed her flashlight, the light cutting through the darkness. The campsite was a nice sight, the fire making the trees around it look warm. I fell onto my sleeping bag, tired but safe. Even now, I don't know how I found my way through those woods. It was a night I'll never forget, showing how strong people can be and how important friends are. It reminded me of how small we are compared to nature, and how beautiful and scary it can be. It was a night full of adventure, fear, and in the end, success. And it was a night that taught me to respect the unknown, and how valuable a good friend is. I always liked camping. Living in Alaska, I had lots of chances to do it. One of my top spots was the Taklanika River Campground in Denali National Park. It's a big campground with 53 spots, open from May to mid-September. The campground is right in the middle of the park, surrounded by Alaska's wild nature. One summer, I decided to go camping at Taklanika by myself. I packed my stuff and drove there. The drive was really pretty with the huge Alaskan wilderness on both sides of the road. When I got there, I set up my tent near the river. The sound of the water was really calming. The first day was normal. I spent my time looking around the area and enjoying the amazing views of the park. When it got dark, I went back to my campsite. The darkness in Alaska is really thick, 
but I was used to it. The second day, weird things started happening. I woke up and found my food all over the place. I thought a bear might have done it, so I put my food in a bear-proof box. I spent the rest of the day hiking, trying to forget about the weird stuff. That night, I woke up because of a noise. I listened hard, trying to figure out what it was. The noise stopped as quickly as it started. I decided to check it out. I took my flashlight and went out of the tent. The light from my flashlight cut through the darkness, but there was nothing there. Just the trees moving a little in the wind. I was about to go back when I saw it a shadow moving between the trees. It was too big to be a small animal, but not big enough to be a bear. My heart was beating fast as I followed the shadow. It led me to the river, and then it disappeared. I stood there, the sound of the river loud in my ears. I felt a cold shiver, not from the cold, but from fear. I went back to my tent, but I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I decided to leave early. I packed up my stuff and left the campground. As I drove away, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. That experience at Taklanica River Campground was scary, but it didn't stop me from camping. But I learned to be more careful and aware of what's around me. The Alaskan wilderness is beautiful, but it's also wild and unpredictable. The sun had gone down over the peaceful Ray Lakes in California, and night had fallen. Our group, a bunch of sensible hikers, had made camp for the night. We were sitting comfortably around a warm campfire, its light casting long shadows on our faces. The quiet of the night was only broken by the occasional sound of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. Off in the distance, we saw a single headlamp its light moving up and down as it came down the winding paths that we were to climb the next day. The sight was spooky, and it made us feel uneasy. Why would anyone, especially someone carrying a tent, choose to hike at night? The question was left hanging in the air, adding to the growing tension. We were also worried about something else. We had caught six fish from the lake, one more than the allowed limit. The thought of breaking the rules, even by accident, was bothering us. As the night went on, the headlamp got closer. Finally, the stranger arrived at our camp. He was a tough-looking man, his face showing signs of what seemed like years of living outdoors. He told us he was part of a group that thought the Sierra Club was too right-wing. His goal was unsettling. He wanted to get rid of all the trout in the High Sierra Lakes. He believed that by doing so, the natural balance would be restored allowing the frogs and mosquitoes to take over again. His words gave us the chills. The thought of such a big change in the ecosystem was scary, and his lack of care for the beauty of the trout was upsetting. After the stranger left our camp, we sat in silence, the only sound being the crackling of the fire. We were left feeling uneasy, like our peaceful hike had been interrupted by a disturbing reality. The peace of the night had been replaced with a sense of dread. The next morning, we packed up our camp, our minds still full of the events of the previous night. As we started our climb up the winding paths, we couldn't help but look back at the lake, its calm surface hiding the chaos that lay beneath. The hike was no longer just a walk through nature, it had become a time to think about our impact on the environment. The stranger's words had stuck with us. We realized that every action, no matter how small, could have a big impact on the world around us. As we reached the top of the winding paths, we took one last look at Ray Lakes. It was a reminder of the beauty of nature and the responsibility we have to protect it. The experience had been unsettling, but it had also been eye-opening. We had set out on a simple hike, but we had come back with a deeper understanding of our place in the world. The journey had been scary, but it had also been really meaningful, and that made all the difference. When we were in our early twenties, my friend and I loved going on adventures. One bright afternoon, he took some acid and we decided to go for a walk near a fishing lake in the city. The place was in the city, but the lake gave us a feeling of being in the wild, a nice change from the city life. As we walked, the noise of the city slowly faded away, 
replaced by the sound of leaves rustling and fish splashing in the lake. The acid started to work for my friend, making his senses sharper and the colors around him brighter. We climbed a small hill, and the lake was now out of sight. Suddenly, we heard a scary sound a dog crying. We stopped, the sound still ringing in our ears. Looking over the hill, we saw something that would scare us forever. A man was there, and he was hurting a dog. My friend was so scared, he couldn't move or make a sound. He was stuck in his own thoughts, the acid making his fear worse. I felt a cold fear in my stomach as we sat there, hidden, forced to watch the scary scene. The man finally left, leaving behind the dead body of the dog. We sat there for what felt like forever, the silence was so loud. My friend was white, his eyes wide with shock. The bright colors he had seen earlier had turned into a scary shade. We managed to get up and leave the hill, the image of the man and the dog stuck in our minds. The rest of the walk was a blur, the earlier excitement replaced with a heavy silence. That day changed us. The city walk near the fishing lake was no longer an adventure but a reminder of the cruel thing we had seen. We learned the hard way that not all walks lead to beautiful places, some just show you the hard truths of life. The memory of that day still stays with us, a scary reminder of the bad things that exist in the world. But it also taught us the importance of standing up against such cruelty, a lesson we keep with us till today. This March, I went on a hiking and camping trip with some friends. One of them was new to this, a city guy who had never been out in the wild before. When the sun went down, we set up our camp. The air was cool, and the only sound was the occasional rustling of leaves. The new guy noticed something strange there was a lot of dew on the ground, even though it hadn't rained. We turned on our headlamps, the only light we had, and saw the ground was covered in tiny glowing dots, like a starry sky. The new guy was interested, but got scared when I told him the dew was glowing red. I told him to look closer. He realized what was happening and went pale. The dew wasn't dew at all. It was the reflection of our headlamps in the eyes of tons of wolf spiders, hidden on the ground. That night, the new guy learned a few things. He found out why we use hammocks instead of tents, to stay away from the night creatures. He learned that wolf spider eyes glow red in bright light. But most of all, he learned that he didn't like being in the woods at night. When morning came, the new guy, who hadn't slept much, packed up his stuff. He had made it through his first night in the woods, a night he wouldn't forget any time soon. It was a tough way to learn about nature, but it also made him respect the wild and its creatures more. From then on, he would always check around at night, respect the creatures living in the woods, and never underestimate nature. As for me, it was another reminder of why it's important to be prepared, respect nature, and enjoy the surprises that make each hiking trip special. I always loved going on adventures, so the thought of camping alone in a remote place was exciting. I found a quiet place, surrounded by tall trees and the calming sounds of nature. As the sun went down, I set up my tent, started a small fire, and enjoyed the peaceful quiet. The night was calm, filled with the gentle sound of leaves moving and the far-off call of an owl. I got into my sleeping bag, which felt warm compared to the cool night air outside my tent. When morning came, I woke up to the sound of birds singing. I stretched, feeling a bit stiff from sleeping on the hard ground. As I stepped out of my tent, I noticed something strange. There, on the small wooden table I had set up, was a hot cup of tea. I was puzzled. I didn't remember making tea before I went to sleep. I walked over to the table and picked up the cup. It was still warm, and someone had already taken a sip. I looked around, but there was no sign of anyone. No footprints, no sounds, nothing. I felt a shiver down my spine. I was in a remote place, far away from the nearest town. Who could have made this tea? I quickly packed up my camp, my heart beating fast. The once peaceful forest now seemed scary and dangerous. I walked back to my car, constantly checking behind me. The drive back to the city was stressful, 
the mystery of the teacup still on my mind. Once I got home, I locked all the doors and windows, feeling a sense of relief. To this day, I still don't know who made that cup of tea. Was it a random hiker? A park ranger? Or someone or something else? I guess I'll never know. But one thing's for sure, my days of camping alone are over. We decided to go hunting in the big, wild Canadian Rockies. We were a bunch of friends who loved hunting and were looking for some fun. We set up our camp in a remote place, on a clear path in the thick woods. The air was fresh, and the only sounds were the occasional rustling of leaves and animal noises. I shot a deer not too far from our camp. It was a good shot, and the deer didn't suffer. My friends and I quickly started cleaning it. The smell of blood was strong, mixing with the smell of the woods. We finished up and dragged the deer back to camp, leaving behind the insides of the deer. Something didn't feel right. I looked back at the place where we had cleaned the deer. My heart was racing when I saw that the insides of the deer were gone. Disappeared. In less than ten minutes, something had taken it. The woods, once full of natural sounds, were now strangely quiet. We didn't know what took it. A bear? A group of wolves? Not knowing was scary. The wild around us suddenly felt dangerous, the trees like silent watchers. We were no longer the hunters, but the hunted. We quickly packed up our stuff, the deer, and left. The drive back was silent, each of us lost in our thoughts. The mountains, once beautiful, now seemed scary in the rearview mirror. The experience was a strong reminder of our place in the world. We were just visitors in the wild, the real rulers hidden in the shadows. It was a humbling, scary experience that none of us would ever forget. I used to go camping alone in the Ocala National Forest in Florida. I loved the peace and quiet, away from the busy city life. One long weekend, I found a quiet spot about 20 minutes from the main road. It was peaceful and far from people. The first two nights were normal, with the usual sounds of nature. But the third night was different. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to the sound of a car driving fast on the nearby dirt road. The noise was strange in the quiet forest, and it scared me. The car stopped not far from my campsite. I heard a door open, then the sound of someone walking on leaves. Someone was coming towards my tent. My heart was beating fast as I heard them stop right outside my tent. I could hear their heavy breathing and occasional grunts, which echoed in the quiet night. I had a gun with me, just in case of wild animals. I never thought I'd need it for a person. The minutes felt like hours as they stood there, a threatening presence. I thought about shouting out, telling them I had a gun. But I didn't want to make things worse. So, I stayed quiet, holding the gun tightly. After what felt like forever, I heard a deep sigh. The person turned and walked away, their footsteps slowly fading. The sound of the car starting and driving away was the most comforting sound I'd ever heard. I stayed still and quiet for about an hour after the car left. My mind kept going over the scary encounter. As I calmed down, I decided to pack up and leave. The peaceful place I had found in the forest was now filled with fear. In the deep woods of Ocala, it's not rare for a body to be found. I'd often seen groups of prisoners searching the area, looking for clues of a crime. I never thought I'd be in a situation where I could have been one of those bodies. Since that night, I've never gone back to Ocala. Now, I only go camping in or near state parks. The memory of that night still scares me. A reminder of how unpredictable the wilderness can be and the dangers that can be hidden within. I was walking around in Switzerland, right in the middle of some really big mountains. The day was ending, and the sky was full of orange and purple colors. I found a great place to camp. The ground was even, and there was a stream nearby that made a nice sound. I set up my tent, and when it got dark, I went inside, ready for a quiet night under the stars. Just as I was falling asleep, 
I heard a low noise that got louder and louder. I opened my tent and looked out into the dark. Something big and fast was coming down the mountain towards me. My heart was beating fast because I realized what was happening rocks were falling. I felt a rush of energy and quickly acted. I grabbed my tent and pulled it out of the ground, moving it away from the danger. Right after I moved, a huge rock hit the ground where my tent had been. The impact made the ground shake, and I could feel it under my feet. With my tent I ran. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I had to get away from the mountain. I ran in the dark, with the sound of rocks falling behind me. After a while, the noise stopped, and I found myself in a clear area, away from the dangerous slope. Tired but safe, I set up my tent again. As I lay there, listening to the nice sound of the stream, I felt relieved. I had been in danger and survived. It was scary, but it also reminded me of how powerful nature is and how important it is to respect it. When the sun came up, I packed up my camp and kept going, now with a new respect for the mountains and a story I would always remember. I've always enjoyed camping, and this time was no different. I was at the Hidden Valley Campground in Colorado, a place famous for its amazing views and peaceful surroundings. The campsite was big, covering many acres with different types of land. There were tall trees, a shiny stream, and a big open space perfect for putting up tents. As the sun started to go down, I made a fire. The popping flames gave a nice warmth against the chilly mountain air. I sat there, lost in the moving flames, the only noise being the occasional hoot of an owl or the sound of leaves blowing in the wind. Suddenly, I heard a weird noise. It was a low growl, coming from the thick forest nearby. My heart was beating fast as I picked up my flashlight and pointed it towards the noise. There, in the light, I saw two glowing eyes looking back at me. I felt a shiver down my back. It was a bear. I knew I shouldn't run or make any quick moves. I slowly moved back, trying to make myself look as big as possible while talking in a strong, low voice. The bear watched me, its eyes never leaving mine. After what seemed like forever, it turned and vanished into the dark. I felt relieved. I quickly packed up my stuff and went to the safety of my car. As I drove away, I couldn't help but feel amazed. That night was a clear reminder of the wild, untouched beauty of nature, and the respected demands. The next morning, I told the park rangers about the incident, who promised me they would keep an eye on the area for any more bear activity. Despite the fright, I couldn't help but feel thankful. That night was a proof of the power and unpredictability of nature, a reminder of why I loved camping in the first place. In the end, my camping trip at Hidden Valley Campground was an experience I'll never forget. It was a clear reminder of the respect we must have for nature and the animals that live there. It was a night that I would remember for the rest of my life. I've always enjoyed camping, and my top spot was the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska. It was just off a big road, close to Lincoln. The campground was huge, with lots of room for tents and big camping vehicles. It had fun stuff like mini golf, a swimming pool, and even a pinball machine. It was a dream place for campers. One evening, when the sun was going down, I decided to take a stroll around the campground. The sky was filled with shades of orange and pink, and the air smelled of pine and soil. As I walked, I spotted a path that I hadn't noticed before. Curious. I decided to check it out. The path took me deeper into the forest. The sounds of the campground grew faint, replaced by the sound of leaves rustling and the occasional owl hooting. Suddenly, I heard a rustling sound behind me. I looked back, but there was nothing there. I thought it was probably a squirrel or a rabbit and kept walking. As I went further, the path got narrower and the forest thicker. The rustling sound came back, this time louder and closer. I looked back again, and this time, I saw a shadow moving between the trees. My heart started beating fast. I wasn't alone. I started to walk faster, but the rustling followed me. It was getting darker, and I was far from the campground. 
I started to panic. I began to run, the rustling sound getting louder with each step. Suddenly, I tripped over a root and fell. I looked back and saw a big, dark figure coming out from the trees. It was a bear. I froze, remembering what I'd read about what to do when you see a bear. I slowly moved back, avoiding looking directly into its eyes. The bear sniffed the air and then, to my relief, turned and walked away into the forest. I let out a breath I didn't know I'd been holding. After a few moments, I got up, turned around, and headed back to the campground. When I finally got back to my tent, I was shaken but safe. The rest of the night was quiet, but the sounds of the campground were no longer comforting. They were a reminder of how quickly peace could turn into fear. From that day on, I had a new respect for the wilderness. It was a place of beauty and peace, but it was also wild and unpredictable. That camping trip was a clear reminder that we are only guests in the great outdoors, and we must always respect our surroundings. The rain had just stopped, and the smell of wet soil was in the air. We were having dinner, and the fire needed to be restarted. Everyone started moving, going into the forest to collect wood. We broke off branches and gathered small sticks. The fire was soon burning brightly, its flames reaching up into the early evening sky. Our goal was to keep it going, to make enough hot coals to boil water and cook our food. I was wearing a plastic raincoat which made noise with every move. I started to arrange the pile of wood by the fire. Suddenly, someone shouted, Watch out! Surprised, I turned around, but everything seemed normal. Then I heard someone running towards me from the side. Before I could see who it was, I was knocked to the ground. My raincoat was pulled off my back and over my head quickly. As I fell, I saw a ball of fire flying through the air, landing on the pine needles ahead. Everyone ran towards it, stepping on the flames to put them out. The person who had knocked me down helped me up. I was confused and didn't know what had happened. Then I understood. I had been standing with my back to the fire, and when I bent over to arrange the woodpile, my raincoat had caught fire. There were flames on my back, but I didn't feel it, didn't know. But Ted, a friend of my dad's, had seen it. He saw my back on fire and didn't hesitate. He ran, jumped, and pulled off the burning raincoat, just before it would have burned my skin. I stood there, shocked, as I realized what had happened. I had been in danger, and Ted had saved me. The rest of the evening was a blur, the incident making everyone quiet. But along with the shock and fear, there was also a deep sense of thankfulness. Thankfulness for Ted's quick thinking and bravery, which had stopped a disaster. That night, as I lay in my tent, Listening to the soft sound of the dying fire and the distant call of an owl, I realized how quickly life can change. But I also realized the importance of quick action, of looking out for each other. That night, under the wide, starry sky, I went to sleep with a new understanding of life and the connections that bind us together. It was a camping trip I would always remember, a clear reminder of the risks and even simple tasks, and the heroes who are ready to act when needed. I'd always wanted to see Alaska because I'd heard it was really pretty. So when I had the chance, I rented a cabin at a popular camping spot called Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins. The campsite was really big and had lots of spaces for tents and cabins, and even some fancy camping tents. It was full of trees and plants, which made me feel like I was really in Alaska. The day I got there, it was sunny and the long shadows from the tall trees were really beautiful. The air smelled fresh and like pine trees. My cabin was in a quiet part of the campsite, with lots of trees around it. It was a simple wooden cabin with a small porch. The first few days were really peaceful. I spent my time walking in the forest and fishing in the river. At night, it was really quiet, except for the sound of an owl or the wind in the leaves. One night, just as I was falling asleep, I heard a weird noise outside. It sounded like something heavy being moved. I thought it might be an animal, but the noise was too regular. I decided to check it out. I took a flashlight and went outside. 
It was really cold. I shone the flashlight around, but didn't see anything strange. I walked around the cabin, and the sound of leaves crunching under my boots was really loud in the quiet. When I got to the back of the cabin, my flashlight showed something that scared me. There were footprints in the dirt. They were bigger than any human footprints I'd ever seen, and they went straight into the forest. I followed the footprints until they disappeared into the thick bushes. I stood there for a bit, feeling really scared. I felt like someone was watching me. I ran back to the cabin and locked the door. I didn't sleep at all that night. The next morning, I packed up and left. As I was driving away, I still felt really uneasy. I knew I'd come across something wild, something that reminded me how small we are compared to nature. Even though it was scary, that experience made me respect nature even more. It reminded me that we're just visitors in nature. And even though I didn't see any ghosts or mythical creatures, the fear of the unknown was even scarier. I'd always heard Colorado was beautiful. When I moved there, I wanted to see it for myself. I picked a campsite called Chalk Creek Campground in Nathrop, right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. The campsite was between two towns, Salida and Buena Vista, and had a great view of the mountains. The campsite was big, with a stream flowing through it, and places for RVs and tents. The sound of the stream was calming, and the mountains looked amazing. I rented a small wooden cabin there, hoping to enjoy some quiet time and get closer to nature. The cabin was simple and cozy, with a small fireplace, a bed, and a little kitchen. It was just me, the cabin, and the great outdoors. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time walking around, fishing in the stream, and at night, I would sit by the fire, listening to the sounds of nature. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I heard noises outside the cabin. I thought it was probably a deer or something. The next day, I found my food scattered around. I thought maybe a raccoon had gotten into it, so I made sure to put it away better. But the strange things didn't stop. I would find my stuff moved around, and sometimes, I would wake up in the middle of the night feeling scared for no reason. I couldn't shake off the feeling that someone was watching me. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I saw a person standing near my cabin. He was tall and big, and for a moment, we looked at each other. Then, he turned and disappeared into the woods. I was scared but decided to stay, thinking it was just a hiker who had lost his way. The next morning, I found a note on my door. It was a warning, telling me to leave. The handwriting was shaky, and the message was clear. I was in someone else's space. I packed up my stuff and left the cabin. As I was driving away, I saw the person again, standing at the edge of the woods, watching me. I realized then that the cabin, the campsite, was his home, his space. I was the one who didn't belong. In the end, I learned an important lesson about respecting nature and the spaces it holds. The experience was scary, but it also made me humble. It reminded me that we share this world with many creatures, seen and unseen, and we need to respect their spaces just like we want ours to be respected. I've always liked being outside, so I thought it would be a good idea to rent a cabin for a little getaway by myself. I picked the Norris Campground in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. It's a well-liked place famous for its pine tree setting and lots of fun stuff to do because it's in the middle of everything. The campground was really big, with over 100 basic camping spots. It was a great place for people who like to try new things, with tall mountains and thick woods all around. The air was fresh and smelled like pine trees and dirt. The sky was really blue during the day, and at night, you could see all the stars. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, hidden among the trees. It was made of logs and had a small porch at the front. Inside, there was a comfy living room, a small kitchen, and a sleeping loft. It was just the right mix of being comfortable and being out in nature. On my first night, I decided to check out the nearby Norris Geyser Basin. The path was a mile long, going through the woods and ending at the basin. 
As I walked, I could hear the sounds of the wood's leaves rustling, an owl hooting far away, the wind whispering. When I got to the basin, I was amazed. Geysers were shooting water high up into the air, with steam rising and then disappearing into the night sky. The ground was warm under my feet, which was a big change from the cool night air. As I started heading back to the cabin, I started to feel a bit scared. The woods seemed darker, and the sounds seemed scarier. I started walking faster, my heart beating fast. When I finally got back to the cabin, I locked the door and felt a lot better. I spent the rest of the night in the cabin, listening to the sounds of the woods outside. Even though I had been scared earlier, I felt safe inside the cabin. I fell asleep to the sound of an owl hooting and the wind blowing through the trees. The next morning, I woke up to birds singing. The sun was shining, making everything look warm. The fear from the night before felt like it was a long time ago. I spent the day looking around the park, seeing the beautiful views and different animals. That evening, as I sat on the porch and looked out at the woods, I felt peaceful. The cabin, the woods, the park it all felt like home. I realized then that being scared was just part of the adventure, a reminder of how wild nature is. In the end, my little getaway at the Norris campground was something I'll never forget. It was a chance to learn more about myself and to see the beauty and wildness of nature. Even though there were scary moments, those moments made the whole thing even more special.